G'day guys, Will here. So as you can see in front of me, I've got a couple of new additions to the sim rig. So today I thought I would show you exactly what I've done, how I built it, how I got it all programmed, and what it all actually does. So we'll start off with the functionality, and then we'll jump into how I built it all a little bit later on in the video. So I've got a new tachometer here, which you can see when I rev up, works and does all its things. It also beeps and has a shift light as well. So we can set that to whatever RPM we want. So grab the camera off the mount and I can show you these in more detail. So here is the tachometer. We've got our boost gauge here as well. And also a water temperature gauge which you can see is slowly climbing away as I sit here. So if we put the car in gear, the boost gauge will do boost gauge things. So as driving a Skyline GTR here in race room around Bathurst. You can see we've got about 0.5 bar of boost, which is the same as what we've got down here as well. So and I'll show you all this in more detail, but what I want to show you quickly is how I've kind of got this rigged up. So it's just running off on Arduino, and I'll show you how I programmed all that in a moment. So the way I've got this rigged up is it's basically piggybacking off the back of my button box here. So you can see there's a couple of switches here. I've got three switches, power switch for each of the three gauges, and also an illumination switch here as well. It's basically the same as turning on and off the headlights in a car. So what happens is when I flick that switch, you can see the gauges dim down and it also turns on the illumination here for the gauges. And then if I flick it off, they brighten up again as well. So I'll quickly show you the start up and shut down sequence as well, because this is pretty cool. So shut down sequence, you can see it does a little dance there. Start up sequence. Also pretty cool. So it's the standard DEFI sweep that you get inside pretty much any DEFI gauge. And I actually had exactly the same gauges in my real life BRZ project car previously that you guys that have been around for ages would have seen. This is the shutdown sequence for these ones as well. And start up. Okay, so what I'll do now is run you through how I connected all this up. Now, obviously, most people aren't going to have the same button box that I've got set up here. This is one that I made myself using AM Studios guide video. And I also used the wiring, basically, from AM Studios videos as well to get all this rigged up with a couple of little adaptations and adjustments to sort of suit my implementation. So I'll run you through everything, but I do encourage you to check out AM Studios videos that they did on this as well because they go into a lot of detail, circuit diagrams, all that kind of thing. But I'll give you sort of a top-level overview of how I rigged it all up and if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to provide more detail for you guys. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, so I'm not going to make you sit through the unboxing of everything, but I do just want to unbox the um, boost gauge here to show you exactly what you get inside. So obviously you've got the gauge, the cap that you can spin around to adjust your peak, and then a bunch of plugs on the back, which we'll touch on in more detail in a moment. Inside the box, you've got the power cable, you've got a sensor cable, you got the vacuum tube, which obviously we're not going to end up using. The vacuum sensor, which we won't use as well. An extension cable for the power. And this is the vacuum sensor here. So basically, it plugs in via the long extension cable to the gauge. So before we start cutting wires and doing things like that, it's a good idea to plug everything in and just test it to make sure everything is working. So if you need to send it back, you don't have any problems from cutting the wires. So the water temperature gauge works in the same fashion. Instead of it being a pressure sensor, obviously it is a temperature sensor. But let's get Jill to jump in now and show you exactly how this boost gauge works. All right, so Jill is gonna demonstrate how a boost gauge works. So what we have here is basically the gauge, we've got the tube, and then the little pressure sensor here, which um, basically the tube connects to that. Normally it would be connected to the, um, the vacuum line of your car via a little T-piece here, so in line with the blow off valve or something like that. And then the sensor sends a signal to the gauge and we get a reading. So we'll start by switching the gauge on. There we go. All right, so what you gotta do, put the tube in your mouth. <laughs> Hold the gauge up a little bit higher so we can see. All right, so now just give it a blow. And you can see there the gauge goes up and down. Try again. Yeah, so it's going up, there you go. You got about 0.1 of a, um... <laughs> all right, and then give it a suck. <laughs> go again. There you go, we have a vacuum. So. That is a very, very, very good way of testing a boost gauge. <laughs> all right, back to serious business. Okay, so with all the gauges now tested, it's time to crack open my button box 
and lay out where we're going to be placing the buttons at the back. So you can see there's a bit of empty space up in the top right hand corner and that's the area that I'm going to use for the bulk of my wiring. So we drill out a little hole for each of the four switches, three along the top for the power switches and one in the middle for the illumination. We also need to drill a small hole in the bottom corner for our DC power jack for the 12 volt power supply as well. So now we can begin our process of wiring. Now I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail about everything that I do here because it'll be different depending on how you want to wire these up. But basically here I'm soldering the power connectors, so negative and positive, making sure that I heat shrink every single connection where possible. Installing a little terminal block here as well so that I don't have to run every single power wire back to the terminal on the thing because I don't want to end up cracking it. It's much safer to use a terminal block. Connecting a 12 volt line to the illumination wire. And then the wire that I'm connecting now is going to be my switch 12 volts for illumination. So when I flick that on, it will dim the lights. So now we're installing our accessories power wires with a common rail across the center terminals. So basically this is powered from the 12 volt supply, runs through the center as a common rail. And then each of these is switched. So when we flick the switch, it basically sends 12 volts to the accessories power for the gauge. We're now soldering a 12 volt tag wire to each of the switches so that we don't have to solder the gauges directly to. It's going to get a little bit cramped in here, so we want to make sure we've got enough wiring to be able to move things around. Again, heat shrinking where possible. And installing another piece of heat shrink so that when we make our next connections, we can heat shrink those as well. So this is our wire from the tachometer. So we've got black for ground red for our always on power, yellow for our accessories power, green for the tachometer signal, and pink for the illumination. So we start off by extending the ground and always on power wires. And then we link the yellow wire or the accessories power wire to the switch tag that we installed just before. Heat shrink over it using the heat shrink that we previously installed. Now we move on to the water temperature and boost gauges. So these have a white wire for illumination, yellow for accessories, red for always on power and black for ground. Both gauges are the same. So again, extend the ground and always on power. As well as the illumination. Making sure we don't get anything tangled, we link the yellow wire or the accessories power to our switch. Heat shrink over the connection. And then we do exactly the same thing again for the remaining gauge. Okay, so we've got a multi-core wire coming from each of the gauges here. So taco, water gauge, and our boost gauge. Now we've got a power which is always going to be connected to power so we don't lose our settings and presets and things like that. We've got a accessories power which is what actually turns the gauge on effectively so makes it do the sweep. And then when we switch it off again, as long as we've got the battery power, we also get the closing ceremony as well. So it's important to separate the, um, the accessories from the always on power. Now we also have an illumination circuit as well, which is going to be this switch here, as well as our ground. And then we also have our signal cables. So we'll start with our illumination circuits, which is the white wires from the boost and the water and the pink wire from the tachometer. So we'll find our pink wire that's coming out here, which is this guy. And our white from this guy. And our white from this guy. all of these together, what we'll do is we'll just twist it up and then we're going to insert it into our illumination circuit here and tighten it down. Next we'll do our always on powers, so the red wires from each of them. 
Now normally with cars, the, the yellow wire or orange wire is the always on and red is accessories, but for some reason on these gauges it's the opposite. So don't get fooled if you're used to automotive stuff. Don't get fooled into thinking that it's the other way around because it isn't. So we want our red wires from each one. And make sure they're not tangled as well before you do this. Now we also need to connect this to our switched power for the illumination circuit as well. So we'll bring that, draw that wire up as well. Twist it in there. And that will connect to the red wire on the terminal block. In addition to that, we also need to connect in line as well the power that's gonna to go to our accessories power. So what we'll do is we'll actually join that in line as well. And what I might actually do is solder all of these together so that we've got a nice clean connection that we can put into our terminal block. I might actually connect my um, power to the, um, to the accessories from the other side, I think. So now we need to install an additional terminal block here for our ground and power directly from the DC input jack and connect all of our positives into the positive side group all of our negatives into the negative side as well. Remembering that you will also need a ground tag to connect to your Arduino board as well. So this is a good idea to link this in now as well. So next we need to build a little circuit for the tachometer signal wire just to make sure that it reads correctly. So we need to use a TIP120 Darlington transistor, a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor, 12 volt diode, and of course a piece of Vero board or breadboard or something like that that you can use to create the circuit. So here on the screen now is a circuit diagram showing how this would work as a standalone. You'll notice that when we actually build this, we do it a little bit differently simply because we already have a common ground and a common positive. So we don't actually need to feed those to the breadboard in this case we're basically just running 12 volts directly to the transistor and then making the other connections that we need so the circuit is essentially exactly the same in how it's functioning the wiring is just a little bit different to suit our application so we start off by scoring the board and basically snapping off a piece that's about two centimeters long and six lanes wide so we start off by installing the transistor along the middle lanes here, one lane spare on the right and two lanes spare on the left. Trim off the terminals, then we install our resistor. So that goes across the first pin and the empty lane. Again, solder it. And then same thing again with our die, but we do need to pay attention to the polarity this time. So the little silver band goes on the inside and we're bridging this across the second and third pins of the transistor. So now we install our 12 volt line to the middle lane of the transistor. Connect your wire that will link to the Arduino board to the outside of the resistor. Now, unfortunately, my camera died here, so I can't show it, but the green wire from the tachometer goes in line with the outer leg and diode of the transistor. So next we want to feed all of our signal cables through to the Arduino board. So our boost gauge goes to terminal D5 temperature goes to terminal D6. Our tachometer signal wire from the Vero board, not from the tachometer itself, goes to D9, as well as our ground connecting to the GND pin on the Arduino board. Plug in our USB. And now we just basically need to secure everything inside the case.
Okay, so with everything all wired up, provided that you haven't got any sparks or flames or smoke or anything, you should be good to go. So the first thing we're going to need to do is jump into SimHub. So if you don't already have SimHub installed, jump onto Race Department and download that straight away. I'll provide a link in the description below for you. So you're going to want to install SimHub. Once you've got that program installed, you want to jump down to the Arduino menu here. And you can see here, we've got a bunch of options, LEDs, displays, gauges, controls, my hardware. So gauges is where we're gonna actually set everything up a little bit later on. But the first thing we need to do is actually load the sketch that actually tells the Arduino board how to operate these gauges before we can do anything else. So to do that, we need to click on my hardware, click on single Arduino if you're using a single board like I am to drive all three gauges or whatever gauges you want to do. And then you wanna click on open setup tool. And that opens up this really cool little dialog box, which is going to pop up behind me. I'll drag it over so you can see it. There we go. So what you can do here is you can you can actually choose the options that you want to have enabled on your board. So f for the case of what we're doing here, we want a tachometer, we want a boost gauge, and we want water temperature. And you can see what we have here is a conflict there on number five. So we can change the temp power pin to pin six. And this is exactly how we had it wired up for our usage case. So we had the ground connected to the ground pin, which is this pin over here. And then we had our boost signal going into D5, temperature going into D6, and our tachometer signal via that little circuit that I showed you earlier to sort of dampen the input that goes to D9. So what we want to do then is we want to choose the Arduino board. Now I've got a couple of Arduinos selected here. We want to choose the Nano and then choose the communications port, which is COM14 in my case. And then we simply need to click on upload to Arduino and that will flash the sketch to the board. Uh, now, if you do have any problems with it flashing, sometimes you can get errors. What you need to do is click on open Arduino IDE. And what that'll actually do is open the Arduino IDE software uh, independent of SimHub and it preloads the sketch. So I'll drag this over for you to see as well. So you can see here, this is the sketch with all the various code and everything in here. So if you do have problems flashing it directly out of SimHub, you can go into the Arduino IDE and flash it from there. You may find that you also need to install the Arduino IDE to get this feature to work properly. So I'll also provide a link in the description to download that as well. Just make sure you've got the right board selected. So in my case, I want to select the Genuino Uno board, the correct COM port again, which is COM4. 14, not to be confused with COM8, which is my button box uh, Arduino board. And then also I want to make sure that you have AVR ISP selected as your programmer as well. If you don't have the right combination, depending on the Arduino board, the exact board that you've purchased, you might have problems flashing. Those are the settings that worked for me. But the Arduino community is really, really great at supporting people. If you have any problems at all, you can jump in and they'll probably most likely be able to sort you out. But yeah, flash it to the board. You simply click upload. It all uploads and then what you should be presented with once you've done all that is a interface here where you can see everything is connected. So we go to my hardware and you can see here COM14, which is the COM port that the Arduino board that's driving the gauges is connected to is showing as connected. So then what we want to do is jump across to gauges and you can see here we've got tachometer, we've got boost gauge, we scroll down a little bit, we've got temperature gauge as well. Okay, so we'll start off with the tachometer. So you want to make sure that always use tachometer full range is switched off. Otherwise, regardless of the maximum RPM of the um, of the car that you're driving, it'll always go to maximum. Tachometer cylinders, I haven't actually found makes any difference, but depending on the car you're driving, you can set that. Typically, most of the cars I'm driving at the moment are four cylinder. And tachometer maximum RPM. So this you need to match to the maximum RPM of the gauge that you have. So in my case, it goes up to 11,000 RPM. So I set 11,000 RPM. And then when I hit on test maximum RPM, and then when I tap on maximum RPM here, you should see on the screen just down there, the gauge will go up. So it's hit test maximum RPM, and you can see there it flashes, it beeps, it does all its various different bits and pieces. That is definitely working. Now, if you do have any problems with the calibration, you find when you're driving cars, it's not showing the correct RPM. You can go into advanced here, and you can actually set the signal for each RPM level. So if we hit test 1000, See, it goes up to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and so on. But click it off again so that it's not enabled. 
back to basic settings, and that is basically how you set that up. Now you can also set the um, the RPM limit for where you want it to beep and where you want the um, the gauge to actually start flashing and things like that. That's all done on the gauge itself, and that will depend on the gauge that you've purchased as well. So we won't go into detail on that right now. Then we'll scroll down to boost gauge. So again, we need to do a little bit of fine tuning here depending on the gauge that you've purchased. But for me, you can see my gauge actually has vacuum as well as boost. So it goes down to minus one KPA. So I'm setting it to minus one here. Minimum output is one, zero output is 106. And you kind of have to fine tune that. So when I hit zero here, you'll see the gauge just, where is it? Just there. <laughs> you'll see the gauge goes to zero. If I test minimum, it goes down to minus one and maximum. Now what I found is that maximum only goes up to about 1.4 on these gauges. And I think the reason for that is the Arduino can't output a voltage high enough for full scale deflection on the gauge itself. So there does seem to be a limitation there. You can't go above about 1.4 bar, even though you might have like a two bar or a three bar boost gauge. So just be aware of that. I can't actually go any higher on my output here. And I'm going to experiment with that a little bit more, see if I can figure it out, but I'm pretty sure it's just a limitation of the system itself. And then maximum pressure I've got here set to 1.5 just so it matches that upper limit of what we're able to achieve here. Now one important thing to note with the boost gauge is that not every single piece of SIM software will support this. Uh, at the moment as of the time of making this video in July of 2019, uh, Aceto Corsa supports it. Raceroom actually just implemented support about a month ago now and um, iRacing doesn't really support it properly, but what SimHub have done is they've actually sort of cheated. So it actually sort of maps the torque output or the projected torque output to the boost gauge. So it kind of looks like it's working, but it's not super accurate. But I mean, you don't really need a boost gauge in a sim anyway. It's just kind of like a cool thing to have. So it doesn't really matter that it's not showing you super accurate data. But if you're using Race Room or a set of course, it does work really well. So then we scroll down to our temperature gauge. And again, we just want to set the parameters of the gauge that we have. So you can see here, I've got a maximum of, or a minimum rather of 20 degrees, which is matching the minimum on the gauge itself and a maximum of 120. And again, you can set upper limits, lower limits. You can set the gauges themselves to beep when they reach a certain threshold so that you sort of notice that your water temperature is climbing before it um, blows up your engine and things like that. So the water temperature gauge is actually kind of a useful one in a sim, unlike the boost, which is kind of just a cool thing to have. But again, you got here a test minimum, test maximum. So we go test min and you'll see the gauge drops down to 20 degrees, you go maximum and it jumps back up again to 120. You might need to fine tune your output levels a little bit here, but for me, minimum was zero, maximum was maximum, and it just kind of works straight out of the box. So that is the configuration. Once you've done all of that, jump into your SIM, and provided that your connection between the SIM and SIM Hub is all working correctly, everything will just work. Okay, so I thought a good way to demonstrate all of this would be an R32 Skyline GTR, because you've got a boost gauge on the dash, you've got a tachometer on the dash that you can see very clearly, so we'll be able to see whether what we're seeing on the dash actually matches what we're seeing on our real world dash here. Now, water temperature you will find reads a little bit low, and that's something that's I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but we'll head out here. You can see it's sort of sitting at 20 degrees, which is what you would expect for a cold engine. Be sitting at ambient, but as we get going, it'll it'll lighten up a little bit, it'll get hotter. But it does sort of tend to max out at around sort of the 60 degree mark. And I'm not sure whether that's how I've got SimHub configured or something like that. I did check my Fahrenheit and Celsius settings and it was set correctly there. But for some reason, it's not um, it's not reading correctly. So well, normally you'd expect to sort of see around sort of, you know, 90 to 110, 120 degrees for coolant temperatures. So need to do a little bit more investigation there to see exactly what's going on with that and why it's not reading particularly accurately, but um, everything else seems to work perfectly fine. So race room specifically doesn't give you any vacuum. So you'll see the boost gauge is sort of sitting down at zero and then going up to 0.5, which matches what we're seeing on the dash. But um, yeah, we're not getting any vacuum indication. Now when I when I jump into a set of Corsa and some other titles, that does work. So it's not a limitation of the gauge, it's just the way race room seems to output its telemetry data. But you can see my tachometer, everything's working absolutely perfectly. I've got my rev limiter or my um, my rev maximum set to, uh, what is it, 6,750 RPM, which matches what I'm running in, um, in MX-5 as my max at the moment, so I haven't adjusted it for this car. But it gives you a good indication anyway. When we go down the straight here, you'll see it sort of max out and um, 
you'll see the shift lights change to red when I when I'm due to change gear and I'm all over the place in this car because I'm just not used to it but that's okay not the point of this video but we'll give it some down the straight here and you can see it beeps at me and turns red when it's time to shift we'll probably max out fifth gear because it's only a five-speed gearbox in this car so see what happens when we get to the end yeah it's maxing out if I change to six I know it's gonna go to neutral but we'll give it a bit of break here second I'll let you just watch for a bit definitely need to spend more time on race room. I really do love this title. I had problems with the AI being overly aggressive and sort of punting me off all the time, but I really do need to spend more time on this game because I really do love it. Every time I play it, I absolutely love it. Messed up my downshifting there again. Should have downshifted. Oh well. Haven't hit any walls, that's the main thing. <laughs> All right. Bring it back into the pits. Okay, guys. So that is how I put together my boost water temperature and tachometer system. Now, obviously, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I didn't go into a massive amount of detail about all the wiring diagrams and stuff like that, simply because my implementation, the way I wanted to sort of integrate things into my button box is likely a little bit different from you. You might not want to have switches for illumination and all that sort of thing. So do check out those AM Studio videos that I've linked in the description for you where he goes into great detail, shows you the circuit diagrams and all that sorts of things so you can get all of this stuff running. But hopefully you found the video interesting and entertaining. And I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below if this is something that you've done or something that you look at doing and if you have any questions at all do let me know and I'm more than happy to help you out as well make sure you jump into our discord server as well We've got a great discussion there going as well and I'm happy to provide screenshots and you know circuit diagrams all that sort of stuff there for you guys as well so anyway thank you very much for watching the video hit the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed it hit the thumbs down if you haven't liked it for some reason but let me know in the comments as well what you haven't liked so I can improve in the future and as I've been mentioning in the last couple of videos we are very very close close to moving into our studio now. In fact, the only thing I've got left now to do is install the carpet tiles, a little bit more electrical work, and then move everything in. We've also got a 2080 Ti, which is going to be delivered within the next 15 minutes, I think, coming for the um, coming for the rig as well, so we can do better quality recording. Lots of stuff to get excited about. Stick around, guys, but thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.